One example of a modern file system that aims to do all those things is ZFS. Is anyone actually running ZFS? It was, at one point, it was supposed to be the standard file system for Mac OS, and then they moved away from it. But there is an open source version, and you can install it. And if you care a lot about your data, the Z, of course, stands for Zeta. So it's the right file system for running your Zeta web server on. And here's the description of it from their site. You know, it's for people that really like their data. It is designed to store huge amounts of data and store it reliably and make it so if your data gets corrupted, you know about it and you can probably recover it. So how do we do that? If we're going to handle failures, we've got to detect them. So how are we going to do that? Part of handling failures, this case where you've you know, scratched the disk and you know you have a failure because you can't read any files, that's one case. But the more serious case we're worried about is the case where some bits on the disk get corrupted. They lose their value. How are we going to detect that? OK, good. Yeah, we need some kind of redundancy so we can check every time we read a block that it's correct. So we need some kind of checksum on every block. So when we read it, we check that it's actually what we're supposed to be reading. And so that's exactly what ZFS does. Where the old Unix system, we just had a disk map that pointed to blocks. With the ZFS, we've got a disk map where for each block, there's a hash, a checksum. That, that is some large, in this case, 256 value that is computed from this block. So it's possible that the block could change and the checksum would be the same, but that would both be highly unlikely and it would be a violation of the cryptographic properties you're supposed to have with these hash functions that it's hard, even if someone is deliberately trying to corrupt a block, it's hard to find one that hashes to the same thing. So that is extraordinarily unlikely that a block would change without us knowing about it unless they also change the value of the checksum. Certainly if it's just a mechanical hardware failure, that wouldn't be the case. But if we're using ZFS, we're paranoid. That's their target market. It's people that are really paranoid that they might get a bleep in their iTunes library that was not intended by Snoop Dogg or whoever they're listening to. We don't want to just trust that the block's correct if the, it matches the checksum. We want to make sure the checksums are correct. So how do we make sure the checksums are correct? This should be something you can figure out. So we're making sure the blocks are correct by computing this hash of the blocks and storing that in the table. How do we want to make sure the checksums are correct? Yeah, so we can compute a hash of the checksums and store that. Right? And we could do that all the way up the tree, keep checksums of, of things. The first approach for this would be, well, let's compute all the hashes. And now we're going to ensure that these are all correct. We're going to compute here the hash of all of those. The hash of the hash should be 1, the hash should be 2, the hash should be 3, and the hash should be four. So that's what's going to be stored here, is the combined hash of all of those hashes. Do we like that? If we have a, a, a really big disk and we're computing this for all the blocks, what happens if one block changes? So let's say I'm editing a file and some bit in block two changes. What are all the things I have to recompute? OK, good. Yeah, so I would have to compute this hash and this hash of all the other hashes. To make that scalable, well, we don't want to have to recompute more than we have to. So what we really want to do is put that in a tree. And this is what's known as a Merkle tree, after Ralph Merkle. And Merkle was one of the founders of public key cryptography. He was one of the people in the mid-70s that started th to think that you could make cryptography asymmetric. And a Merkle tree is just organized like this. So you're going to have a tree of hashes. This is going to be the hash of the hash of B1 and the hash of B2. And this is going to be the hash of these two. So this way, we only have to look at the log. If one block changes, we're going to have to follow that path up the tree and at each level recompute a hash. But we're recomputing log n hashes for this total number of blocks. So this is what ZFS is doing. What happens if we get an incorrect value? So let's say we read block two, and it does not match this. So what should we do when we get an incorrect value? If this was all we had, what would we do? Is there any way to construct block two? 
Okay, right. If that's all we have, there's no way to reverse from this hash to compute what the block is. The hash is smaller, so even if it wasn't a cryptographic hash, there's no way to go backwards. But it's also designed to make it hard to go backwards. So if we didn't have anything else, we're done. We're very upset that we've lost our data, and we know we lost our data, but we don't have any way to recover it. So the solution is we've got to keep multiple copies. The strategy ZFS does is you can configure this. The default configuration is to keep two copies of everything. So one copy is there, stored on the disk all the time, waiting for you to really need it when you find that the checksum fails. You don't have to read it every time to verify it because you're checking the checksum. You don't have to always read both copies and check they're the same. But if the checksum fails, then you read the second copy and you really hope it's okay because if that one fails, then you've lost. If you are more paranoid, you can set copies to three and have three copies of everything. This might start to give you the idea why this is not the default file system on Mac OS X. People who get their, what's the biggest SSD in a MacBook these days? It's still pretty small. It's like maybe 512 gigabytes. So you don't want to divide it by three unless you're really, really paranoid about your data. And you don't even want to divide it by two. So that's why it's not, not the default for people that have small disks and are not that paranoid about their data.